So first off, I want to thank everybody that accepted my cookie. You agreed to me recording your data, processing it, and later on selling it to any company I see fit. So making me a lot of money. What just happened? You accepted something, you accepted my cookie without asking if there were strings attached to it. I gave you something, and in return I took something from you you didn't even know you actually had. That thing is data, specifically personal data. The oil of today's era. So, talking about data. When you're born, your name gets registered in a file, and when you die, long after you die, there's still data about you. Data in all kinds of forms. Every site with your phone you visit is being recorded in terms of a cookie. The government knows how much money you make, and all hospitals have a file on you on your personal health and everything like that. So, what just happened? I'm going to go back to the example I just gave. It's a bit exaggerated in terms of me having your personal data. So if we were to say it's a cookie, then I wouldn't exactly know who you are, I wouldn't know your age, but what I would know actually is that you guys are here right now, you're sitting about this, and you're listening to my talk. And this can be enough for some companies. So during my talk, I'm going to give a lot of examples uh, about Facebook, but uh, keep in the back of your mind that the examples I'm going to give you doesn't just apply to Facebook. They also apply to Google, Apple, Twitter, Spotify, basically any company that wants to make money and has a lot of data, these examples would apply to. So let me ask everyone, who here is still on Facebook? Let me see some hands. Uh, Instagram maybe? Instagram? Ah, yes. So um, what's it like, you know, working for uh, Mr. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Mr. Facebook? <laughs> see some confusion here and there? Um, well. You work for him, basically, you know, you generate data for him every single day, that data he sells, and he makes money off of you, so indirectly, you work for him, sort of. So how does it work exactly? The moment uh, Facebook came to the Netherlands, everyone was excited and wanted to join Facebook. Same for Instagram, when it became a bit popular. In that rush, everybody just clicked on accept, accept, accept. They just wanted to be on Facebook as soon as possible. And in those three, four clicks that you accepted the terms, uh, you basically accept it to Mark uh, taking your data and using it in any marketing purpose he sees fit, so selling it, um, all that kind of stuff. So let's go back to that moment then, back to when you first created your Facebook account. Imagine you're having a box, or better yet, let's take an actual box. So this box I have here is your Facebook account, or at least the moment you press the button, let's create an account. It's a completely empty box, nothing in it yet. So what happens? The first time you create your account, Facebook's going to ask you to fill in some information. So let's take the box, and um, I have my ID here with my uh, name, where I'm born, where I'm living right now, all that kind of information. So that goes into that box. Secondly, of course, I'm making Facebook. I want to install it on my phone. So um, I put my phone into the box as well, together with actually my friends, uh, because you know I want to connect to everybody. So put it in there as well. And over the year, and over the years, I started using Facebook more and more. Uh, so I got a relationship, um, took some photos, and uh, I also gave those to Facebook. Bought a new car recently, and also again made some photos. Goes into that box. So now we have my box of data right here, right now. And that box of data is just something between me and Facebook, right? So I'm going to ask everybody an embarrassing question, and I'm going to admit to it first, uh, but who here did those really cheesy Facebook quizzes, like which Harry Potter character am I, or uh, what cat do I identify with, or what age am I going to die? Come on, show me some hands. <laughs> who did them? I see, see a lot of people not raising their hands. Uh, I think that's one of those questions where uh, not everyone was honest. But um, So what I, what the reason I'm talking about these quizzes is because I want to show you something. Because the moment you took that quiz, you had to press like two times. Uh, it asked if you wanted to connect your Facebook. And um, after that, you saw that you were more of a Ron than a Harry Potter. Well, this is what actually happened. The moment you clicked those two times, that quiz actually he did a bit of this, just looking inside your personal data box, making a picture of your data, and in exchange, you knew which Harry Potter character you were. So basically, for a really stupid personality quiz with no meaning whatsoever, you paid for it, 
with your valuable personal data. It's kind of sad if you put it like that. So I'm going to go back to this box because uh, it's my data box and um, it's not really full right now. I haven't used it. I just made it. But uh, over the days, the weeks, I start using Facebook more and more. This box is going to fill up. So every cat video I watch, every dog video I skip, every page I like, every comment I give, and everything I share gets recorded in this box. Facebook records everything I do. So once this box, box fills up a bit, uh, that's actually when the fun for Facebook starts. Because what Facebook's going to do, they're going to extrapolate my data. Quick sidestep. What's extrapolating? If I say one, two, three, four, anyone care to guess what I'm going to say next? Five, exactly. So you get a cookie. Uh, yes, so Facebook's going to basically use my historical data and predict uh, what I'm going to want, think, do next. So is this bad? Well, I believe with great power comes great responsibility. And I'm going to give you three examples of how Facebook extrapolates data and uses data. And I'll let you guys decide what's bad and where's the line. So the first example I'm going to use is one that's most familiar to everyone. For weeks, you'll be thinking that maybe I should get new shoes, maybe I shouldn't. Um, and then it hits you. You see that ad for those red velvet shoes you really, really like, but uh, you're kind of wondering, hey, how did Facebook know I'm really into red velvet shoes? But you don't really care. You saw those shoes, you like them, you bought them. Well, that's part of the extrapolating data, because just like I have a data box, every single one here that uses Facebook has a data box. And what Facebook does is, they not only look at my historical data, they start comparing my box to other people's boxes. And they see a box that's like similar to mine with one difference. That person just bought red velvet shoes. So they're going to compare and Facebook's going to try. Okay, hey, you're similar to, the, to that person. That person has red velvet shoes. Let's see if you also want them. And most of the time Facebook's correct or else Facebook would be out of business by now. And then there's a second example, which is a bit more extreme. Uh, it's about a story about a man in America. Um, he found out through Facebook that actually he was gay. He wasn't out open, nobody knew he was gay, but uh, Facebook was showing him gay ads for a gay dating site. And before he even knew and told anyone himself, uh, Facebook already knew. Going back to the box, there was just a box similar to his, a box about somebody that's gay, somebody that uses gay dating sites, and Facebook just made the connection, and later found out that Facebook was actually right. A bit more extreme, a bit more personal, you know, Facebook telling you your sexual preference. Then there's a third example. It's about uh, the American election, 2016. In the uh, election, there were, was a scandal about certain demographic audiences being targeted by certain messages, being able to, you know, swing voters, to make people vote for, for, another, for a certain candidate. Uh, I'm not going to name anyone, but for a certain candidate. Uh, it was a big scandal. But ju just let that sink in for a moment. Just think about it. Facebook having the potential, the power, to decide the world leaders of tomorrow. So when I do these talks about data and stuff, uh, I get a lot of questions. But there's always one question I get the most. Is my phone listening in on me? Everyone's asking it uh, when they use Facebook, when they're seeing ads. Is my phone listening in on me? And I'm going to give you an answer today for those that wonder. The answer is uh, no. And it's actually no for two reasons. First off, yes, they can actually, but they don't. And they don't do that because processing all your voice data every day, day in, day out from everyone, it's just too much hassle when there are so much smarter, easier ways to collect your data when you're giving it to them personally yourself. So they can, but they don't. So why do we actually think that phones are listening in on us? Well, that's our own brain tricking us, actually. There are two psychological reasons for that, why we think that. So the first one is the frequency illusion. And what does the frequency illusion mean? Well, if you look outside, you won't be seeing a lot of orange bikes. But that moment you start buying an orange bike and riding your orange bike through Amsterdam, you're going to see a lot of orange bikes because you start to identify with that orange bike. You just bought one and you suddenly see, hey, a lot of other people have orange bikes as well. The number of orange bikes didn't increase over time. It's exactly the same. You've probably seen the same bike pass by every day. But the moment you bought that orange bike, you start to see it. You start to see the signs. And the second is the confirmation bias, the second psychological reason. We as humans are 
not objective. We, we want to be right, and some people identify more with that than others, uh, but we want to be right. And what does that mean? That we're looking for signs that confirm our idea. We have the idea that our phones are listening into us, so we're going to look for signs that say so. An example of that would, for example, be you're reading the paper day in, day out. You don't read anything about shark attacks. Sharks aren't, are harmless. But the moment you start watching a really scary movie about sharks, and you get the idea, hey, sharks are dangerous, sharks are evil, next day you're going to read the papers, you're going to notice stuff. Stuff like, hey, a shark attack here. Something about sharks there. You start to notice things that you probably read before but didn't pick up because you want to be right. You want the idea of sharks being bad, sharks being dangerous, to be true because that's the idea in your head and that's basically what confirmation bias means. Just like we want to believe our phones are listening into us and uh, that's how they find us and that's how they get our information. So there's just then one question that remains after hearing all of this and telling you all of this, all the dangerous stuff about data. How are we going to live with ourselves? How are we going to live in today's society knowing what I just told you about companies following you, your data being used and all that? Well, the first step would be awareness. A lot of people aren't even aware what I just told you. A lot of people aren't aware how their data is being used and are just giving it away like cookies. Um, so the first step would be aware. Just be aware that your data is being used and be careful who you're giving your data to because uh, some companies uh, are a lot less clean going around with it than others. But I'm not going to leave you here, leaving this room, without some actual knowledge, something that can actually help you defend yourself. Like I'm going to give you actually two weapons to fight off companies that use your data. In 2018, uh, a law was passed in Europe. Uh, it's called the GDPR. And basically, that law helps us as civilians to protect us from companies using our data. It's really long, a lot of things. I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing, but I'm going to bore you, or not bore you, I'm going to actually tell you two things about it. So the first off is, in that law it says, everyone here has the right, as a European citizen, to see their data. If a company you don't like or a company you mistrust, you can just call them up. You can just mail them, you can do whatever you want, and ask them, hey, can you show me my data? And that's by law, they have to give you your data. They're going to give you some paper where it says all the data they have on you. That's your given right. That's the first one. And then there's the second one, and this is actually my favorite one. It's called the right to be forgotten. And just as it says, the right to be forgotten. You can tell any company, I want you to forget me for any reason. You don't have to hate the company. You don't have to, they don't have to, have to do anything to you. As a company that has your data and you're just not feeling right about it or you just really don't want them to keep calling you, you can just contact them, you can mail them again, call them, and just say, hey, I want you to forget me. Just take all the data you have on me and just throw it away. As a European citizen, you have that right as of 2018. So when you walk out that room, I want you to remember those two things. You can look into your data anytime and you can be forgotten by any company at any time. So closing my talk, I just want to ask everyone one last question. Anyone want to accept my cookies? <laughs> Thank you very much.